that's so we're now on to probably one of the most challenging uh, aspects of plugging up the visualize. First thing we're gonna note is the difference between a wedge and a plane. Wedges can move, but planes can't. So what you'll find often happens is remember when I said that there's a reaction force between a general particle and a plane. Particle here. Okay, and you, you, you put it parallel to the plane here. What happens is for every reaction there's an equal but opposite reaction. So when you have the reaction force R, which basically stops it from from which basically stops it from going in from, from digging into the ground. Now when this is a plane, the R value here equals the component of gravity. usually uh, mg cause a that's for a wedge okay that's for a plane not a wedge okay? the difference between a plane and a wedge is a wedge can actually move so in the case where the wedge is actually moving this means that the, the plane is technically given way so in this case r is not equal to mg cause a because it's given way. So there's actually an acceleration in that in that direction. So as R slides downwards, the wedge moves across. I should really uh, control and group that. I'm just gonna bring it back a few steps. So what happens is as the wedge Okay. Now, as the wedge, uh, as the, the particle slides down the wedge, what happens is the wedge actually moves to the right because this unbalanced force, the R value going down, the R value going up equals equal R value going down, and this R value is not equal to MG uh, as a alpha like it usually is because the wedge is given way. This means that we have to. Wedge is actually moving itself, so this means we have to come up with a different strategy than what we normally do. So, what we're going to do first and foremost is we're going to look at the question, and we have an angle of 30 degrees. That's awesome. And we have our particle m. Now, what I'm going to do first is we're going to write down some of these. Uh, we're going to do these diagrams separately. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to do my shape. So this was the mass m. Okay, so that's it. Now, we're just going to go specific to M here. It has an R value going straight up. No. And it has the usual uh, stuff driving it downhill. So, weight goes straight down, value uh, perpendicular, and a value parallel to the axis. Okay. We know that this angle is 30 degrees. That means that this is 30 degrees, and this is MG. We know that this is mg cos 30, and cos 30 in the calculator should be uh, root 3 over 2. This is root 3 over 2 mg. And we have uh, mg sine alpha, because this is the opposite. So mg sine 30. And we have half mg. Okay. So this is a half mg. Now, we're going to do the next lens is we're going to give this particle acceleration b and the wedge acceleration a as the particle goes diagonally left down it pushes the wedge to the right with speed a okay now question once find the acceleration of the wedge so it wants to know what a is and then finally find the acceleration of the particle relative to the wedge it also wants to know what b is okay so this is the uh, the R value of this here. Now I'm just going to go on a side note here. I just want you to think of something, all right? And here's here's what I want you to think of. Imagine that I had a rectangle instead of a wedge, and have a rectangle on top of another rectangle. Now the deal is here is that 
uh, we'll call the small rectangle 2m and we'll call the rectangle let's say 5m. Right? Reaction force uh, R on the 2m triangle is matched by its weight 2mg. The reaction force S is matched by the weight of the particle, which is 5mg. Equivalent to a 7mg weight acting. Right? Well, in the case of where we have a in the case of where we have a where we have a wedge that can move, what happens is in a case like this, and I still say this is 5m. 5m going straight down, or 5mg going down, reaction force uh, S going upwards, that's fair enough. But then what's going to be affected here is, well, this is 2m, not all of its weight is being supported. So the R value, reaction force value, has to be broken up into components going directly down and directly across. So I just want you to remember that when we move into the next section, okay? Now, the other thing you're always going to do with these questions is you're going to, when it comes to the particles, you're always going to resolve, see the way the acceleration is parallel to the plane. You're always going to resolve parallel and perpendicular. We can see this is quite evident in this uh, part here. We're going to label all the perpendicular parts, all the perpendicular parts, and here's the parallel part. Have everybody? Now, Next thing you're going to do, this is what's called the particle diagram. Next thing you're going to do is what's called the wedge diagram. Now let's do a diagram of what the wedge experiences on its, from the wedge's point of view. So, from the wedge's point of view, it experiences a reaction force R going in the opposite direction. This R is exactly the same as this R here, just in the opposite direction. Remember, it doesn't equal root 3 over 2 mg this time, because the wedge is giving way. It's moving position. So it's not a balanced force anymore, because, because the wedge, the, the uh, surface the particle is sitting on is giving way. So that's the main difference between a plane and a wedge. Wedges, they're not equal. Okay? Just to hit that point home. Okay? Nextly, we have an R going down here. Now, because the, uh, because the acceleration of the wedge is in this direction here, what we need to do is it either needs to be, we need to resolve directly up and directly across, parallel and perpendicular. So this is very important. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to say this is angle A, not butter. Now, if I just extend this line straight down here, That'd be 90 minus A. And we know that this here is a right angle, which in turn would make this angle A. So we'll put your line back a little bit. And we do that in our head. This here. Now, what I can do with this is I can resolve the reaction force directly down and directly across the same direction as the acceleration of the actual wedge. You see me do this every single one. This is going to be R cos 30. And this one's going to be R sin 30. Root 3 over 2 R and a half R. And R. If you want, you can have a reaction value S if you want. This could be reaction value S going upwards, and the way of the particle is 2m, so you now have a 2mg going downwards. Okay, and that's everything the wedge experiences. Now, the next thing I'm going to ask you to picture, I'm just going to go on the side now here. Imagine uh, you often see superhero uh, movies where somebody's on a train, and if the train is going, for argument's sake, 15 meters per second. When the superhero is running on the train or relative to the train, it's either running at five meters per second. And what I mean by relative to the train is if the train was stationary, this will still be running at five meters per second. But the train itself is also running at five meters per second. This means that there's going to be an, an adding effect here, which makes it 20 meters per second. 
same is true for acceleration. Boys would say that the the man was accelerating at a uh, five meters per second squared, and the train was accelerating at a ridiculous fifteen meters second squared. Common acceleration of the man to an imperfect level would be twenty meters per second squared. So you need to be aware of that when you're doing these. Okay, so. The issue with this is that we now have to do something called an acceleration triangle because in this case the moving object so imagine the tra uh, the wedge is the train okay? and the man is actually going down like so particles going downhill okay so here's what we do with the acceleration you have to take in, although the particle sliding down at A, because it's moving on a moving object, it's affected by the acceleration of the moving object. But what I have to do is I have to transfer A into the same direction as B. And I suppose it's like trading computer languages, like uh, you need a translator or different currencies, euros to pounds. So I need to convert A into the same direction as B parallel and perpendicular to B, to be precise. So here's what I'm going to do with A, and here's what I always do with this question, right? I always go down to the, I always go down to the, uh, to the bottom. If A goes in this direction, I'll do it in a different color. We all agree that the acceleration is going in direction here. Now what I always do is I bring it down here to the very bottom, like so, and then I draw, uh, draw a parallel, Axis, and then I stop and draw perpendicular, and this is known as my acceleration triangle. Now we know that this, in this case, it's actually uh, cos thirty, because the acceleration is thirty. Angle is thirty. My fault. A is the acceleration. And this means that parallel to the plane, going cos A is going to the right, acceleration is moving diagonal right. And diagonal right down, parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So what we have here is a cos 30, otherwise known as root 3 over 2. Next one we have is a sine 30, otherwise known as a half a. Okay. Now this is where the uh, the fun begins because I have all this all this information here. Now what I'm going to do is there's several formulas you're going to need to 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 do here. Okay, so uh, for any particle you have on the plane, the way you have this particle here, we have two formulas: we have parallel to the plane, or we have perpendicular to. They are the two formulas we have. So we're going to start off with a uh, parallel to the plane, and we'll do it all. Uh, I'll use the okay. So, force, which way is it moving? I think we're all thinking it's going to move diagonal left down. Okay, what's causing it to move diagonal left down? Well, the a half mg is definitely doing that. So that's no bother. Half mg. No friction here. If there was friction here, we'd do a mu r and we'd have it opposing it in the opposite direction. But there is no friction this time, so. Very simply, a half g. Now, now, let's continue. What is the actual acceleration downwards? Well, its acceleration is b, but it's being opposed by root 3 over 2a. In the same way, if you were going down the stairs and you were accelerating at 3 meters per second squared, down, down down the stairs. Well, imagine this is not stairs and it's actually an escalator. The escalator is moving you up at two meters per second squared acceleration. Imagine it's not it's constant velocity escalator, but an escalator that's actually accelerating. This means overall you'd only be going one ms minus two on the way downwards. So just bear that in mind that the, the root three over two a is actually opposing b. So when it comes to force equals uh, mass times acceleration, now whatever acceleration is, acceleration is actually going to be the 
going to be B, which is diagonal left down, minus root tree, sorry, root tree over 2A. So that's root over 2A, and that's moving the angle right up. That equals a half mg. The M's will cancel. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 2B minus root tree A. That is my first equation, and this is parallel to the slope. Next equation I'm going to look at is perpendicular to the slope. Now, I'm going to list the perpendicular forces here. Now, we can see that acceleration B is perpendicular to this angle. See, B is parallel to the, uh, to the plane. Or sorry, to the to the wedges wedges axis, but uh, the ones that highlighted in yellow are perpendicular to it. B won't play any part in perpendicular to the plane. But when we're talking about perpendicular to the plane, we're talking about the uh, sorry, we're talking about perpendicular to the wedge. We can see that the wedge is given way. So the direction the acceleration is going in, you can see it here. It's diagonal right down. The force is diagonal right down. What's causing it to go diagonal right down? What's causing that wedge to give, give way? It's actually the weight of the particle that's causing that to happen, which is your root tree over two mg. What's opposing that? It's the reaction for R acting in the opposite direction. Okay. Now, force equals ma. It's not ma. It's going to be a, It's not ma. It's going to be a m times a over two. I'm going to a half a, and that goes the angle you write down. That equals root tree over two mg, take away r. Yeah. Multiply both sides by two, we get ma equals root tree mg, and it's two r. Now, What we're doing here is that's your second equation. This is a perpendicular, so perp, and the other one's par. Now, the next equation I'm going to look at is the wedge itself. Please remember the wedge's mass is m. So I'm just going to highlight my arm so far. I got this guy here, and everything has an m here. So the last one, everything had an M, but on this one, not everything has an M, so I'm just going to highlight that one there. Now, we're going to look at the wedge itself. What causes the wedge to move to the right? Well, the only force I see causing this wedge to move across with an acceleration A, the only force I can see actually in the wedge diagram is quite simply half R. So, force for the wedge, which I'll do in green, Right across, force equals ma, mass times acceleration, but remember it's 2ma because it's the, 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 the wedge is two, uh, has a mass of 2m. So 2ma, and what's the only thing that causes it to move to the right? The only force I see is a half r. That is the only thing moving in that direction. And that's moving to the right. Now, what this will essentially do is I'll be able to substitute out R here, cross multiply. I'll get R equals 4MA. And that will be R equals 4MA will be this one here. Now I have a good way of substituting out this 2R here. So this means 2R would be 8MA. Now we can change this formula into MA root 3. Uh, root tree mg minus 8ma. Cross multiply, oh, sorry, move everything across, I get 9ma equals uh, root tree mg. M's can take a hike, and then we just do root tree divided by 9. Remember that, but yeah, root tree over 9 is root tree over 9. So the answer is root tree over 9. What's my answer there? I know that's correct.
Next, we're going to move on and we're going to find out what B is. Well, we're going to move back up to the top equation. Here it is here, 2B. So I'll just get rid of all this. Do that anymore. So I can find out what 2B is. So 2B minus root tree A. So we know that A is root tree G over 9. So 2B equals uh, 3 over 9. Uh, one third G. There's the one third G over the other side, so we get G minus one third G. Two B equals uh, two thirds G. So I'm hoping that B is one third. Here's hoping. Of course, uh, right at the death, I make the simple error. <laughs> you move that across, it was a minus, becomes a plus. Four over three G divided by two is. Always the easy ones, isn't it? So the answer is actually B equals 0 to 3G. Okay, guys, that is question one.